Welcome to today's program in the Our Finger Lakes History Series. I am Seneca County historian Walter Gable. This program is the third in my occasional series of people with Finger Lakes roots. This program deals with Stephen Harkness, who probably became the second richest American in his later life because of his partnership with John D. Rockefeller in the Standard Oil Company. In the chapter, The Man and Three St Strangers, in his 1954 book, Forgotten Stories of the Finger Lakes, A. Glenn Rogers began by writing, Finger Lakes pioneers have indeed played an important part in the development of this great nation of ours. And regardless of what has gone in the, into the melting pot to mold these United States, this part of New York State has more than contributed its share. In that chapter, Rogers goes on to tell how two men, Stephen V. Harkness and John D. Rockefeller, born in the Finger Lakes, became two of the richest Americans in their later lives. John D. Rockefeller was born on July 8, 1839 in Richford, New York. Richford is southeast of Ithaca. Harkness was born near McDougal, town of Fayette in Seneca County. Stephen Vanderberg Harkness was an American businessman who invested as a silent partner with oil magnate John D. Rockefeller Sr. in the founding of Standard Oil Company. In 1818, Stephen Harkness was born on a farm near McDougal in the town of Fayette. His father was one of the first doctors in the town of Fayette. When his mother died in 1820, his father, Dr. Hark Dr. Harkness, moved the family to Northeast Ohio. When his father died in 1825, his second wife moved the family from that Western Reserve area of Ohio back to Seneca County. A. Glenn Rogers in his chapter describes Stephen Harkness as a bright boy and had great ambitions for the future. With the vast Finger Lakes region then in the process of healthy settlement, Stephen turned his eyes to the new frontiers, which were fast pushing westward. At the age of 21, he finished his apprenticeship in Ohio as a harness maker and moved to Bellevue, Ohio. He was determined to own his own businesses. In 1855, he set up a successful distillery in nearby Monroeville, Ohio. His distillery business background helped him to get in the crude oil refinery business. The crude oil ref industry was a whole new industry. The use of petroleum rather than whale oil. He partnered with William Halsey Doan to establish a crude oil refinery. By 1866, he felt he was wealthy enough that he could sell all his various businesses in Monroeville and move to Cleveland. He moved to the famous Millionaire's Row in Cleveland, Ohio. Shown are pictures of several of the mansions of these wealthy people who live there. The Harkness Mansion no longer stands. This millionaire's row was a four-mile-long section of Euclid Avenue and was home to about 250 of the nation's most powerful and influentially wealthy industrialists from the 1860s to the 1920s. While there in Cleveland, Stephen Harkness organized the Euclid Avenue National Bank, and he also became president of the Belt Manufacturing Company. 
Getting back to Glenn Rogers' story in the book Finger Forgotten Stories of the Finger Lakes, it was one evening in 1870 that Stephen Harkness had a visit from three individuals. These three men were John D. Rockefeller Sr., Henry Flagler, and Samuel Andrews. These three men were interested in the then infant crude oil refining business, but needed more financial backing to start their own business. Harkness had some natural affinity for two of these individuals. Rockefeller had been born near Cortland here in the Finger Lakes, and Harkness's second wife was a flagler. Harkness invested as a, as a silent partner in the firm first known as Rockefeller, Andrews, and Flagler, and then became Standard Oil. Stephen Harkness was the second largest stockholder in the Standard Oil Company. He was a director of the company for the rest of his life. As this new company flourished, Harkness became enormously wealthy. At the time of his death in 1888, he was very possibly the second richest person in the United States, second only to John D. Rockefeller, who owned the largest shares of stock in the company. Not just so sitting on his laurels, with Rockefeller and Charles Brush, Harkness constructed the Cleveland Arcade, which was an enclosed shopping mall. Shown at the left is another view of the interior of this enclosed shopping mall called the Cleveland Arcade. It is modeled after the Galleria Vittoria Emmanuel II in Milan, Italy. On the right is shown a medallion with a headshot of Harkness. The medallion is outside a main entrance to the Cleveland Arcade. When Stephen Harkness died, he was buried in a Cleveland cemetery near where John D. Rockefeller is also buried in that same cemetery. Harkness had amassed a great fortune and his widow established the Commonwealth Fund, a foundation dedicated to the improvement of health care. All in all, she and her son, Edward, oversaw the donating of over $129 million of Stephen Harkness's amassed fortune. That would be the equivalent of over $2 billion in today's dollars. So in Stephen V. Harkness, we have another example of a person born in the Finger Lakes who went on to do great things in his lifetime after leaving Seneca County. As A. Glenn Rogers put it in his chapter in this book, Forgotten Stories of the Finger Lakes, yet it was a meeting in faraway Ohio between two men born and bred in our own lakes region, which ultimately shaped the history of a vast industry worldwide in scope. I hope you have enjoyed this third segment of famous people with Finger Lakes roots, which is part of our Finger Lakes history. Mm -hmm.